Welcome to Things You Don't Know, the podcast that looks at little-known facts about well-known people and events, little-known people and events, and the impact that they have had and always seeks to entertain. We do not restrict our content to traditional historical issues, but are guided by things that are interesting to us and others. Dr. Deneen and I want to thank Susan Spur for suggesting this topic and helping with the voicing. We also want to extend our gratitude to Patrick and Don McKenna Kehoe for their voice acting. If I mentioned the name Peggy Arnold, would you know who I meant? Probably not. Conventional historians exclusively attach her name to being married to Benedict Arnold. America's most infamous traitor. But there is far more to her story. It is highly likely that she was the power behind the man. Her motives seem far more complicated than the assumption that she was just manipulative and conniving woman. Her family was very wealthy with high social status. Her father was a judge Peggy was the only surviving child in a sibship of eight. Her father seemed to view her as his legacy and to all evidence never denied her anything. She therefore grew up feeling that she was entitled to anything she wanted to have. Peggy was very loyal to her family and seemed to place them second only to herself. If she was challenged in any way, her emotions took control and could result in her taking violent actions. At one point, as you will see, she broke her father's arm. Great leaders often possess a streak of devilry. They usually have dual motives for any action. Since the beginning of the history of the United States, the name Benedict Arnold has had only one meaning. Traitor. His story is far more complex. Benedict Arnold was a man who poured out his wealth and body into the American struggle for independence during its first three years, from 1775 and 1778. His valor went unrewarded as it had throughout his youth and young manhood. He had struggled as an indentured servant, lost his wife, and suffered severe physical injuries during his victories at uh, Valcor Island and Saratoga. He financed his armies out of his own pocket and was never reimbursed. General Horatio Gates stole all the credit for the Saratoga victory. It seems unlikely that any of these factors, individually or collectively, were the sole factor causing such a dynamic figure to uh, betray his allegiance to America. Rather, it seems that he fell in love with Miss Peggy Shippen, a woman considered to be one of the most attractive women of her day, a brilliant, loyalist young woman who possessed boundless passion and uncontrollable spending habits in the same person. In order to understand what lay at the root of Ms. Arnold's otherworldly hold on men, we must briefly look at the world she inhabited. The last quarter of the 18th century was a world obsessed with class and social rank. Even within the 13 colonies, many believed that no political or economic success could compensate for being born outside of the center of the empire and it and the uh, royal court. Marrying well was the only chance for women to rise, since the opportunities for careers and self-directed activities of our own time were non-existent. Americans, for a century and a half, had treasured their status as a key portion of the British Empire. This commitment to British styles extended even to language, uh, although we almost adopted German as a, our language. Um, we don't have an official language, but most people speak English. When a member of the 13 colonies spoke of going home, they were not referring to where they live or where they had been born. Rather, 
They were not referring to where they live or where they had been born. Rather, they meant the United Kingdom in general and London specifically. This love of the mother country particularly blossomed in the first daughter of the Shippen family. Peggy, the daughter of Chief Justice Edward Shippen, had grown up the brilliant, pampered daughter of a rich family. She was the only child of the eight children who survived into adulthood. Her first love was a rising British officer, Major John Andre, to whom she was engaged until she turned her charm towards Benedict Arnold. It was to Andre that Peggy wrote, arranging the details of Arnold's defection. In the first scene, which takes place in May of 1776, Andre is leaving Philadelphia to return to his regiment. His scene involves Peggy, Major Andre, and Judge Chippen. John, my love, don't go. I'll return as soon as this gang of rebels are beaten. John, I need you more than I need the air I breathe and the food I consume. I could hardly marry you without a fortune or a title. Farewell. Come back. Father, why didn't you let us marry before he left? This just isn't done. You must be patient and behave like a lady. It's time for dinner. You have broken my heart. I cannot eat one morsel of food. Gather yourself. I think you've broken my arm. Where is your respect? Benedict Donald had severely injured at the Battle of Saratoga, the American victory there in 1777 had been entirely his doing. Gates had stolen the credit. The victory cemented the American alliance with France. Arnold's wounds are so severe that anyone else would have had his leg amputated. He was blessed with an aide, Major Louis Franks, who treated him like family. The arteries have been severed. If this leg is removed, you will get gangrene and die. I won't have it, Doctor. Major, see that the order is followed. There is a gun to your head, Doctor. Don't try to treat the general against his will. You're mad. Okay, get me a branding iron. I'll sterilize the wounds and set the bone. This pain is for my country. This is a badge of honor. God help me. I hope I don't get blamed for your fate. You have served the Republic well, Doctor. Wounded in body and spirit, Benedict Arnold fell in love with the indulged Peggy. Andre had fallen from Peggy's favor when he couldn't acquire a title. In this next scene, we eavesdrop on a conversation between Peggy and Benedict. Benedict had been court-martialed for making deals to move loyalist goods through American lines. He marries Peggy and begins seeking a path to rise. Peggy is used to champagne tastes. However, she and Benedict had a beer budget. She spent every dollar three times over. To secure her husband's cooperation, Peggy made some of her suggestions when they were in the tub or in bed engaged in marital relations. I am in love with you, Benedict Arnold. But I am worried about you. You have become crippled in the service of these ungrateful Americans. They treat you like just another soldier. I want to give you everything you can possibly want. You deserve it. What I want is for you to be treated as you deserve. 
Washington loves me like the son he doesn't have. I believe it. I have to believe it to keep going. My love, don't you see? He is at the mercy of that rebel Congress, which is in the hands of people like Reed and Gates. They have insulted you by denying you what you really deserve. What are you talking about? I'm no traitor. You must trust me. There is a better path. The king has offered amnesty and American nobility. Viceroy Benedict Arnold V. Think of it. Power. A title. More money than you and I could ever spend. I can arrange it. I won't do it. I don't want you to betray your country. I want you to save it. The French alliance will result in domination by the Catholic Church. What will it become of your country then? Together, America and Britain could rule the world. The slaves and indigenous peoples are rallying to the Union Jack. Washington will see through any move I make. <laughs> I'm smarter than that slave-holding farmer. Georgie is no threat to you. You could persuade a number of men on both sides to serve under you. Cornwallis says you are the only officer he truly trusts and respects. I could do this? With my honor intact? It would enhance my love. We will make love in a palace surrounded by our children who will rule after us. Take your destiny in hand. Now, go! Very well. Write to your friends. Bargain for money and a title at the bare minimum. Now kiss me. The negotiations were completely finished by early 1778. Arnold had pursued Washington to give him control over West Point, the future military academy, then a supply base and fortress. Her father was in exile in the United Kingdom, and she made arrangements for her children and stepchildren to gain passage to the UK. Peggy Arnold understood intrigue better than her husband. She would have to appear a victim. Her diary explains that she planned to fool everyone, including George Washington, into believing she was completely addled by the circumstances. She used the 18th century notion that women were not capable of long-term decision-making and political intrigue to help save her husband if he was discovered. Scene four begins after Mrs. Arnold had gone word that Andre had been captured. Benedict and Peggy were concerned that Andre would reveal the treasonous plot that Peggy was hatching for Benedict to switch sides. Scene involved Peggy Benedict and General Washington. Peggy had a plan, which was to act as if she was adult or mentally overwhelmed while talking to Washington to soften his actions and manipulate him. Oh no! Heaven help us! You must flee, my love! I was supposed to meet with Andre. Washington is coming tonight. How on earth will I ever get away? Leave that to me. He underestimates my cleverness since I am a woman. I will say something like, Oh, General, how could I ever know what is in my husband's mind? I am just a woman, a lost little wife with a baby. 
Southern gallantry will take hold, and he won't dare suspect anything. Now do as I say, and get out of here. I love you more than my old or new country. Take care, my precious. When General Washington arrived at the Arnold residence, Peggy was ready to give her prepared performance of a helpless adult female. Mrs. Arnold, it's such a joy to see you. Where is your husband? Have you come to do away with me and my baby? Oh, do you want to kill my baby? Oh, get this man out of here. It is I, General Washington. None will harm you. Oh, oh thank God you're here. It is rumored that my husband has betrayed the cause. He seems to have fled. God help me, I didn't know. No one blames you, dear. Try to calm down. Colonel Burr, take Mrs. Arnold upstairs. If Arnold has betrayed us, who can we trust? Benedict Arnold escaped to the warship HMS Vulture. Only 200 of the 20,000 soldiers he had promised to Britain changed sides. He was given command of his own legion, but his suggestions to undertake a guerrilla-style warfare in South Carolina were ignored. Benedict Arnold felt betrayed by everyone around him long before he betrayed them. Gates had stolen credit for his victory at Saratoga. He felt hurt that Washington had refused his suggestions on keeping up the fight in Canada and allowing him to be court-martialed for smuggling loyalist goods through the lines in Philadelphia. He remained a bitter man for the rest of his life, even fighting 30 duels over two decades, during which time he was in London. Peggy was allowed to pass through the lines and join him, and they lived out their days in London till his death in 1801. His last words were, God forgive me for wearing any uniform but that of my country. Peggy gave birth to seven more sons and died at age 44 in 1804. His descendants remained in British military service for nearly a century. Well, we hope that you have enjoyed this uh, look into a little-known historical character, Peggy uh, Arnold. We hope that you'll, you'll join us again. Until then, have a great day. Bye. <laughs>